Hello, this is Susan Brown, and this is part two of the amazing mold rubber pouring, and this video is the demolding. So it's been a little more than two hours now, and I know I told you that the amazing mold rubber takes up to four hours or maybe longer depending on the humidity level of the climate where you live. Say if you're out in the southwest or in the Colorado, California area where their humidity is in the tens or less, this could take 24 hours or more to cure. So um, be prepared and don't be frustrated if it doesn't cure as fast as you expect because this does cure on a humidity rate basis. I'm in South Florida in Fort Lauderdale and we're having daily monsoon season. It's hurricane season. We have thunderstorms every day. All of June and most since, since July has started, we've had downpours all day every day for I'm going on several weeks now. And so our humidity is between 80 and 90% on a daily basis. So I poured this around quarter to 9 p.m. my time. And I, as you saw in the previous video, these are the three things I prepared. There's an item in here on the back end of this coffee mug. There are several items in this uh, metal tin. And as you can see, it's hard to the touch now. And then this is on the back of a glass dish, which has a really beautiful circular pattern. And I do know that it's ready because right here on the corner, I tried to peel it away and just to make sure that it was all cured along the inner edge. And yes, it is. So I'm going to show you the product box really quick just to remind you what we're using. And this is the Amazing Mold Rubber, a two-part silicone liquid molding product from Amazing Crafting Products. And this can be found at, at uh, Hobby Lobby Store, at AC Moore, or uh, not at AC Moore, sorry. It's not at AC Moore yet. Hopefully they will be getting it soon. Um, at Michael's. It's at Michael's and Hobby Lobby, and you can get it directly at moldputty.com and a few other retailers you can find on a listing there also at the moldputty.com website. So let's demold the glass plate first since I've already started and you can watch the previous video to show how I did this. This is Sculpey clay, non-cured. I didn't heat this, I just used it as a barrier to hold my liquid silicone in and so it has not stuck to this at all so I'll be able to use this clay again. Yay! So I'm gently peeling this back to reveal my brand new stamp. Oh, this is wonderful. So I have this beautiful dotted texture stamp now. And this will also double as a faux DIY no gelatin rubber plate. So I can do monoprinting on the smooth side here. Or I can use it to do resin pours on or whatnot, but I love things that have double duty and this is about, I'd say about at least a quarter inch thick top to bottom, it's nice and flexible so isn't this lovely? So this one's done, I'm just going to set this back in here so I can take a photograph of it, a proper photograph since I am doing video today, not my usual course of action but. I'm getting to the point where taking 200 photos of a project and then editing them and posting them is, is getting beyond my patience. So it's time to move to video. Okay, so this is the coffee mug, which I have made my border scotch tape. And the scotch tape is holding in a sand dollar in here. So I might need to grab some scissors. Let's get a box cutter blade even though I shouldn't be messing around with one of these according to my favorite finger here it's been cut off twice <laughs> okay so this scotch tape is going to be a little bit sticky still with the mold rubber but that's okay I'm just going to toss it here in the trash can 
and it's still a little tacky on the outside edges but that's all right once it finishes curing now that I've taken the tape away it'll be fine I do have my rubbing alcohol in the little spray bottle handy and so to get some of the stickiness off of my fingers now I'm going to be a little more gentle with this because it is a sand dollar I want to try and demold this without breaking the sand dollar off because then I can go back since I have it mounted on here I did hot glue it I don't want to break it if I don't if, if at all possible so I'm just going to gently go around and break the seal and hopefully I won't have to cut the silicone to free the item and if I don't break it off then I can go back and do a mold putty mold too so let's see there might not be any way around it oh here it goes for some reason I'm seeing some of the blue stuff up oh, it broke okay the sand dollar broke but only in one little spot oh well, that can be salvaged oh nice okay so it didn't soak through where I put the wacky tack that was a plus it did get a little bit past my glue my hot glue but that's okay but I only broke it in one place so I'll be able to salvage this and use it again provided I don't break it anymore getting it out okay so this one's free um, I need to get some scissors and do this but I'm gonna unwrap this other one before I do that and see the mug is completely clean I just need to throw it through the dishwasher to get it cleaned off now this is my metal tin and because I have five or six items in here this might be a little time-consuming on demolding this as well only because the starfish in the middle is very, was very textured so we're just gonna see it's good to have a trash can handy so that you can just put the sticky gooey tape right in the garbage can I happen to have a can right here at the side of my counter so and it has a flip top lid so okay I'm gonna the edge of this is very sticky gooey maybe I should wipe that off the alcohol works really good for getting the stickiness off I'm not going to save these pieces of wacky tack because I don't know if there's a chemical reaction when the silicone meets it so I have plenty if I need more Dollar Tree is right down the road. We have a lot of Dollar Trees down here, so pretty much everywhere I go, there's one on my way. So that's a good thing. They're a great source of Ziploc baggies and foil and rubbing alcohol and these little spray bottles I get from there. And I've got one with vinegar, white vinegar in it. I've got one with the mold to mold rubber release in it. And I also have one with the rubbing alcohol. And they're all labeled with my Dymo, not my Dymo label, uh, P Touch. I have a P Touch. Never got much use until I started molding. <laughs> I label all my little spray bottles. Okay, this is coming out pretty nice. Now I had some dominoes and a mahjong tile and the starfish okay everything's come free so this looks pretty good here I hot glued a oh I have a dice one single die okay this is the starfish button there okay this is the little mahjong tile let's get this out okay there's that 
and it looks a little oily inside because remember I brushed the the detail so it wouldn't have an air bubble in there and the detail is really fine but there is an air bubble right there on the side of my tile which is alright so I didn't tap around there so maybe the oil made oh there's a little divot in it oh maybe not maybe that was already an imperfection in it so this is the domino nice so afterwards I'll go back and trim up these edges with some uh, detail scissors just to clean that up to make it easier on pouring now here there was an air bubble right there but that's okay that's at the edge of the of the domino this is another one I didn't uh, I put the smooth side down okay let's see if I can get the die out the thing that's great about the mold rubber is it's super flexible except for when you make a real dense mold so that's one thing that's hard but if you can't get the item out you can just slice it with the razor blade very gently and then peel it apart when you pour your resin in there um, it will not seep out and it will be pretty seamless okay I'm gonna have to use the razor blade to get the starfish out because some of the silicone seeped underneath the arms so I need to break it away just enough because it, some of it fused to the wacky tack so this is going to take a little a little work to get it out but that'll be a it'll be worth the effort in the end this is one thing I've learned with using these products is that I have to learn to be patient and I've really learned to be patient and learn learn the hard way to do some things um, but then to keep trying and, and to, to make it so that it works oh this is going to be great once I get all this wacky tech out of here where'd that paper clip go? Ugh. let's get some of this stuff out of here remember I built up all those layers of the wacky tech and so some of this did fuse to the silicone but once I get it out let me see if I can get this button out already come on okay I have some areas where the silicone see where it's stuck it's stuck under my hot glue there see those little strands so I'm gonna need to cut that away that's one of the reasons why you want to build a solid barrier underneath your item to be molded because otherwise you're gonna have an area where it tears you don't want that. So I need my exacto knife. This is one of those things if you have an extra person that can help you with it, give you a hand, that's the time you want to have an extra hand. So you just need to slice that a little bit and be gentle not to cut into the other part of the mold. I don't need these parts because this is the back side. Because of all that hot glue, this is way deeper than than it needed to be. So this is in an area that's not going to harm it. Ugh. Come on. Now I'm being very gentle because I don't want to break my starfish. But <laughs> I don't want to cut... Okay, I'm going to have to cut this one. So I'm just using the razor blade, just gently pressing into it to break it free. So I don't cut a bunch of strands into the edge of the mold. I'm only going to make one cut just to help expedite this. Because I did put a lot of hot glue on there, and it's got five arms on it, so when I go back with the scissors and trim some of it away it'll make my life easy so you can see the detail there it's a little bit hard to see with the color but once I put resin in there and this will seamlessly fuse back together and there won't be any you won't be able to see any any of that there where the line is because I didn't even cut through I just cut to the edge 
So back to this. Just cutting very gently. I need to free this blue stuff, the wacky tack. Most importantly, I need to not cut my finger that's been cut so many times <laughs> before. And now that I have all the other items freed out of there, up oh, the shell, it broke. I heard it. All right, since it's broken, out we go. Hopefully, I'll be able to get this out. Oh, it's way down there. Okay, note to self. Wacky tack fuses to mold rubber. <laughs> oh, this poor shell is destroyed. I feel bad. Sorry, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Starfish. Okay. Ooh. I'm excited, but I'm sad for the starfish. It's going to take me a little while to clean out this blue gunk out of here. But it is coming out, so it's just sticky. Well, at least I can still use the arms of the starfish. I'll make sure I give it a proper burial at the beach. Send it back to where it came from. There was this show on earlier this evening that my husband was watching when I got home. And it was on one of the science channels. And it was about this giant crab that is taking over everything in the sea. And it was eating those spiny sea urchins. It was eating starfish. It was eating everything. It was very sad. And the starfish are pretty spiny little guys. They've got all those little spokes and stuff on them. Oh, this is going to be so great. I can't wait to pour resin in these. I'm going to have to maybe spray this with some, some uh, spray oil and let this soak a little while and get the rest of this gooey blue stuff out of here. But it is not in the part that I've molded. It's only in the part where... I don't have to cut some of this away. But you can see in the mold... The detail is there. The starfish is perfectly captured. A few of it has got a little bits of it have gotten stuck in the mold, but I think when I wash it out, it will be fine. But I definitely have to do some trimming just so I have some access. But all this part up here is just mold box. So my starfish is down in there and there's a good quarter of an inch of extra rubber that was used to cover the top part of it but all of the part that I wanted is perfectly captured so this is going to be fantastic so you see my three molds oh well let's get the let's get the sand dollar out now let's try and get this without breaking this anymore Oh, since the starfish worked, I'm really excited about this. I'm glad I put the oil on it because it's coming off very nicely, except for this one little piece. Because it did seep around the back. 
but it's coming off real easy. I'm just trying not to break it in five billion pieces. So let's pull this piece out. Oh, nice. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. Okay, so this one little area here, that's the part that went into the center right here. The other ones, because I didn't press the clay very far up into there, but that's okay because it's got all the detail of the little, of the little cilia furs that were on it. It's hard to see on the video, but that's going to be neat when I cast it in resin. So I'll have to go and trim all these up, trim trim all this excess away so when I pour it, I don't have to worry about peeling this back. I'll leave a little bit of it so that I have a nice edge and I won't have to go back and sand that away. Um, but definitely I don't need all this excess here. So, and I'll trim off the edges on the sides of the mold just to clean it up because it is quite sticky from the tape. Um, but that's it. So thank you very much, and I was not able to save Mr. Starfish, but I will be able to use these pieces for something else. We'll make it work for something else. But oh, I'm so excited. So thank you for joining me, and keep a lookout for what I make with all my new molds. Have a great night.